All right, guys, welcome into the channel. Dave Greathouse with the Greathouse team and Remax Above and Beyond. And today we're talking investing, uh, kind of looking back at 2023 and looking ahead to 2024. And as you can tell, it is the end of the season, uh, end of the year here in our holiday season. So we are looking forward to a very prosperous 2024, especially with all of you investors out there. And joining me today to talk about real estate investing in Cleveland is our favorite property manager, Ari, with Homex. Ari, how's it going? Hey, hey. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on. I know it's a busy time of year for you. For sure. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about, you know, maybe just a quick look back at 2023, but also looking ahead to what can we and our investors expect for next year in what seems to be probably another year of a crazy market. So We'll start there. You know, what's the Cleveland rental market like, uh, specifically for like investors out there? And what do we mm -hmm. expect maybe for 24? Okay. Well, I, I still think there's a ton of opportunity. Um, we're just seeing competitive pricing as always because inventory is low. So we're going to continue to see that. But um, the opportunities are, are still here. Right. And I mean, the... You mentioned the inventory. That seems to be the big driver, right? Is is mm -hmm. lack of inventory is keeping prices high on the homes that these investors will be purchasing. Right, right, exactly. And because of that, you know, we are starting to see a shift, really a decrease in the um in the cash flow. It's just yeah. it's not what you know what it was a year or two ago. It's just a little different now. So you just have to, you know, make sure you have the right team to make the correct determination. Yeah. When you're getting yeah. investment property. That's a great point. And I think no, none of us are, you know, no, Nostradamus that can figure out what's mm -hmm. going to happen next year. But right. all signs are pointing that interest rates are going to come back down, which would you would think would help people say, okay, it's maybe a good time to, to sell my property. And that might kind of ease that tension with the inventory problem that we have today. Right. No, for sure. For sure. So as far as rents go, um, <laughs> you obviously deal with a ton of renters. And mm -hmm. you, you manage a lot of properties. How have you seen rents? I mean, are they increasing? Are they coming down? Are they flat? I hear mixed reports about that. Yeah, you know, in Cleveland, um, Cuyahoga County, really across the board, we are starting to see those rent rates stabilize a bit. Um, they're high. So they've stabilized at a higher place than where they've, you know, where they've normally been. Um, but we're not really seeing like a huge increase as much. So back in 2020, 2021, rents were skyrocketing, right? Mm -hmm. So they're still there, which is probably a good thing for investors. For sure. right? Their rents are still pretty high, but you don't anticipate mm -hmm. them growing at that clip. No, no. And if they do, it won't be at that rate. You know, yeah. at this point, um, we really have to take the economy into consideration. I mean, inflation is at a, an all-time high right now. It's insane. So... Uh, people are really starting to feel that a bit. So because of that, I think that's where we're really starting to see the stabilization in that space. I, I had a conversation with um, somebody yesterday who's a tenant who's looking to now purchase, but they had mm -hmm. mentioned that in 2021, they were paying, I want to say like $1,000 a month. And they had mm -hmm. been there two years prior. And mm -hmm. at the end of the year, the owner said, okay, your rent's now 1350 yeah. And they were completely shocked by that. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's kind of a difficult conversation to have with tenants. Is that something that you've seen people try to do it that much of an increase in rent year over year? Uh, yeah. So usually where you see something like that is um, it's a tenant who's been paying below market rate for yeah. the past couple of years. So really, once you get to that jump, you're really just at the market rate now. And that is the conversation that I have with tenants, especially when um, we have an investor client who's just purchased a property and the tenant is there already. And they're wondering why in the next 60 to 90 days, you know, they have to pay this increased rate. And I just break it down. You know, you've, you've been really lucky. Like you've been really lucky to ride that wave. But honestly, your market rent is where, you know, where we're asking at this point. Yeah. Um, you brought up a good point a while back when you said that the higher price points for purchase are mm -hmm. making it difficult for investors to cash flow. Mm -hmm. One of the conversations, or I should say a lot of conversations that I've been having with potential investors on how to offset that is to go the section eight route. 
right? Because Section 8 routes sometimes can p- provide higher rents, correct? So, okay, I want to I want to break that down really okay. clearly here. Please so, do. Uh, with with Section 8, it's not that they're going to pay more than what the market rate is. So, Section 8 has um a spreadsheet of sorts where they break down zip codes and they'll say, "Hey, we'll give this much for this zip code." Yes, they will but only if they can justify it by what they actually see in the market. So if they're offering $1,400 for 44103, but there's nothing on the market to support that, then you won't get that. The rent determination will be lower. So it's important that people understand that. So there's an appraisal type process. Yeah. 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 Right. Mm-hmm. So the, 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 the company or whether it's CMHA or a different one that's handling the section eight is going to look at what is actually rented and what's a yes. fair price for that particular tenant. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Um, if you don't mind, maybe we could stay on topic with that section eight, because I do get a lot of questions and I know a lot of folks out there are probably interested in that. Um, cool. Is it a good avenue to go if you say you find a property that might need ten or $15,000 worth of repairs or renovations to then just get it, you know, while you're doing that, just go ahead and get it rented, you know, I guess approved for section eight. Is that process difficult? No. So you don't actually get the home approved for section eight. So the tenant has to be interested in your home and then the tenant starts their process. And it it usually takes like 45 to 60 days. So you, if you want a section eight tenant, you do have to be prepared for that, um, for that gap. Like there, there won't be any income for those two months. And then you have to take into account the time that it's on the market before that. So sometimes you could be looking at maybe 45 to 90 days where there's no income. So you just want to take all of that into consideration. But the advantages are that typically it's guaranteed income. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Um, so the strategy that, that you know, there's all kind of different strategies that investors try to implement to, to make mm-hmm. money. Um, what have you seen, I guess, over the last year or maybe what you anticipate for next year, maybe the best strategy for people mm-hmm. if they're looking at maybe cash flow? Okay. Um, the uh, maybe investing in areas that maybe up and coming areas, um, those C class neighborhoods, you know, you're just going to have to, consider those more risky or like more risky investment. That's probably where you're going to find your cash flow. Um, But that's also where a a good realtor and a good property manager is going to come into play. So you're going to have to, you know, really make clear determinations on what we need to do to get to a space where we can be competitive in that market um, and, and get our, you know, the highest rents in those spaces. So, for cash flow, we're thinking you're probably if that's your main driver, right? Yeah. You're looking at getting the most cash flow. You're probably going to be in areas that aren't, let's just say, as nice, right? They're not going to be your A and B neighborhoods, right? Right. Right. So, um, if you know, how do I want to put this? If I'm an investor and I've got you know X amount, but I want to have a pretty nice area, mm-hmm. and I guess what I'm my question is, do I have to just kind of be a little bit more patient with my cash flow if I'm in those areas? Like maybe it doesn't cash flow crazy in year one and year two, mm-hmm. but down the road, it cash flows a lot more. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you're that type of investor, then I would say you are more looking for a space where you can invest, kind of park your money in, in a right. decent asset um, and and really take advantage of the tax breaks more than anything. Right. Okay. So. Yeah, I guess that's a good point. I don't think about a lot is, is the advantages you get for having a rental property on the tax side. Maybe you, mm-hmm. you, you get a little less on the cash flow every month, but mm-hmm. um, you know you do have those advantages that, that, sure. that come along with it. Um, so for first-time investors, maybe mm-hmm. they're younger, maybe they don't have a ton of cash set aside. You know, What's mm-hmm. sort of like your advice if someone's looking at Cleveland for the first time, mm-hmm. maybe for their first investment property? Because I'll tell you, there's a lot of savvy investors out there that, that are much younger than, than you and I are looking to get started yeah. building their portfolio. Like, What mm-hmm. would you give them advice for in terms of looking in Cleveland for a rental property? 
Um, well, and most won't do it, but I always suggest a visit. That's just really important. It's just, right. you really need to understand the city and, and understand the lay of the land before you're investing hundreds of thousands thousands of dollars in this space. Like you, you really need to have a really good understanding. If you are not going to visit, then you need to have a great realtor, an honest realtor, a great property manager, and an honest property manager. That's it. Yeah. And listen to them. Yeah. Listen to them, please. Right. Yeah. Please. So I've had this conversation this week with a few folks that are very enticed by 50 and $60,000 price tags. Right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Look, it's not my job to tell somebody how to invest their money. That's not what I'm doing here. I think my job mm -hmm. is to educate people and, and, and likewise for you. And mm -hmm. But to your point about coming here, I think, listen, everybody's risk level is different, mm -hmm. right? Some people may not be scared of those those types of areas and they're willing to put their money there. And that's fine. But I think there's validity in the point where you make is come here and see it for yourself and then determine if that's a risk you're willing to take, right? Please. No, for sure. And it's not a, a difficult place to get to, right? I mean, there's a lot no. of places that fly nonstop to Cleveland. And honestly, Absolutely. like Josh and I have had people fly in from all over the world. I mean, I yeah, think people same. met, you know, our same. guy from Paris that came in, right? Like we'll yeah. spend time with you here. We'll we'll drive you around the city. We'll show you neighborhoods. We'll show you as many properties as we can. Yes. I think that's a huge, huge tip and a huge advantage to the investor out there that's serious about making this, you know, an investment for their future is know what you're getting into. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, if you're going to invest that much money into a property, just buy the plane ticket. Just yeah. buy the plane ticket. I agree. We've so, got a lot of cool places yeah. we can take you around and we'll show you the city. We'll have it's a good a time city. doing it. Yeah, it's a great it really city. Is. Um, all right. So I, I hope maybe we can talk a little bit about some locations that you've seen some I guess opportunities in, right? Uh, I can mm -hmm. tell you this, like I know you and I have chatted and we've talked about Euclid as, as being an mm -hmm. area that makes a lot of sense. I, you know, for, for the viewers out there, I'll tell you right now, I didn't grow up in Cleveland. And when mm -hmm. I, when I moved here, I remember very early on people telling me like, Oh, you want to stay out of Euclid. I, I've mm -hmm. enjoyed my time in Euclid to be quite honest with you. I sold a few houses there recently and I've met neighbors mm -hmm. and it, I know that there's probably rough parts. There's rough parts in every city, but sure. Euclid to me is an area that makes a ton of sense. And I think it's got a lot of properties, single family properties, maybe three bedrooms, one and a half mm -hmm. baths that to me, like they're nice little properties. And I think you've mentioned to me, like you have no problem ever renting those. Yeah, I don't. Euclid is a great area, um, especially for our first time investors. But if you're looking to expand your portfolio, Euclid is definitely on the top of the list for me. Yeah. Do you have any other areas that, I know you mentioned earlier, kind of like up and coming areas, anything that you'd mm -hmm. recommend people pay attention to? Uh, but yeah, Midtown for sure. So we're seeing a lot of changes there. Um, really good highway access, really close to two of our major hospitals. So Cleveland Clinic and University. Um, it's just a really good area to consider. And then anything along the Opportunity Corridor, of course, anything close to yeah. that highway has been, um, I've seen a lot of changes there too. Yeah. So if, if people at home are looking on a map, you know, the, there's east side and west side and there's always mm -hmm. that divide for the people like which one side's better. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the west side is is, I mean, a great place to live. Just so is the east side. I just mm -hmm. feel like the west side might, you know, some of the areas are probably priced too high for it to make a ton of sense. Oh, yeah. From from a number sure. standpoint. Um, but like, you know, what about things like Garfield Heights and Maple Heights? Like I've had a ton of success out there. Oh, yeah, no. Maple and Garfield are definitely great areas. Um, I am seeing a shift there, um, very heavy on the on the renter side, and a lot of Section Eight. And I'm seeing higher rent determinations from Section Eight in those spaces. Excellent. Okay. So, I mean, I'm I'm assuming these things change over time. Like probably five years yeah. ago it was different, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, in some of those areas, you know, you were looking at homeowners that were in those spaces for the most part. But of course, yeah. 2020, 2021, a lot of those people sold and for good reason, you know, until after about a year and a half into that, they said, we're not going to sell. We don't have anywhere to go, but 
yeah. for the most part, that first year, it was like, yeah, you know, you you got a lot of renters there now because it was a great space to invest. Yeah, and it's close to a lot of highways and stuff. Like, oh, I yeah, really, I really sure. like that area down there. For sure. Um, mm-hmm. Excellent. Well, uh, I appreciate your time. Yeah. And we are going to put all of your information in the comments down below so people can reach out to you with their property management Thanks. needs or whatever. Um, I think that's a great place to start. You know, if somebody was interested in investing, can they just contact you directly and have a quick conversation with you? Absolutely. Cool. Cool. Well, that's okay. it for now. I appreciate your time. Uh, as always, guys, we'll have Ari's information and ours down below. Reach out to us directly when you're ready to buy or sell your great house.